Now, what I'm going to do is tell you this. Forget about the world believing in the gospel. We've got to get the church to believe in the gospel. If we're embarrassed over John 3.16, how do we expect the atheist to ever be born again? If we're ashamed of the Bible being the inerrant word of God, how are we ever going to win these young people whose minds are up for grab? They don't need to see a silly church like pastors that are now inviting perverse marriage relationships, denying the word of God, telling us we've got something better than the gospel. Let me tell you something. That is the stupidest thing you could ever say. For there is nothing better than the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no competition. And the Bible describes all of this list that I just wrote to you, read to you. Every one of them is an emotion. Arrogance is an emotion. Self-loathing, lack of self-control, slander, brutality, hating good. And here's what the Bible says, unnatural appetites. It says blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unholy, unloving. Someone is wondering, where did all this come from, from America? Where did the TikTok perversions come from? Where did this sudden flood of evil come from all over America? A young mother doesn't put a, a baby that's newborn in a dumpster until something is fatally broken in her spirit. The war has moved from just illness of the body to illness of the mind. And this is what I'm going to tell you. It's unloving, unholy, unforgiving. Here's what unforgiving means. The wound of a past event never heals. Some of you don't realize that people are frozen in the, their divorce that happened 20 years ago. They're freeze-framed in that event, never got over it. And we're watching people that can't get over things. When you look at, with disgust and horror, at Hunter Biden's lifestyle, a young man that had everything and has plumbed the depths of depravity. It's the age we live in. But now let me tell you the most dangerous. Here's a rule of writing. When you write something and you make a list of like the litany of these disorders, there's a law of writing called graduation. In other words, if you start making a list of something that's beautiful, you say, this is pretty, this is prettier, this is, pretty, this is the pretty. You end your list with the superlative. If you're describing something horrible, you describe the beginning stages of horror, and the, the last one on the list is the most horrible. So why is it that Paul said, it isn't blasphemy, unloving, unforgiving, but the most disastrous thing is in verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power of it. So it is the false Christian, it is the religious individual with just enough of a belief in God to be absolutely immune to real faith in God. They are the most dangerous. They are the most dangerous because they walk in the streets of America aware that Christ is the answer and they say nothing. Aware that the gospel is the power of God and they do nothing. But ladies and gentlemen, in this fire and glory tour, we are ending that era in the American church. And we're coming, somebody help me right now. We are coming back to the gospel of Jesus Christ, preached without compromise, apology, and without fear. The joy of the Lord is our strength. This, the, uh, the gift of peace is the one, now let me give you another one. 1 Peter 1, 8, whom having not seen, you love. C.S. Lewis was confronted by the secular press one day and they asked him, how can you believe in Jesus if you can't see him? And he looked at him, didn't bat an eye. He said, I don't believe in him because I can see him but because by him, now I see everything else. See, my life fell together. Now let me 
let me say this now. Whom having not seen, you love. Do you have any idea the gift that God gave you to walk by faith? Do you understand that when you believe God is going to pay your bills, when you believe that God is going to protect your children, when you don't see the provision of God, but you believe in it anyway, you have no idea what a gift that is. In this day of emotional destruction, that places you in a category of to be envied. The non-Christian should look at you with deep and profound envy at how you have been gifted with this sight beyond sight. This ability to love a God you don't see is the greatest gift of all. And that's why Jesus said it to Thomas. He said, Thomas, you know what? The fact that you've had the physical miracle of touching my hand and reaching in to my side and knowing that I'm the risen Christ with physical evidence, you are blessed. But even more blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Am I preaching yet? Whom having not seen you love, in whom though you now see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The next time the devil lies to you, the next time the devil says something to you, get up and dance. The next time the devil tells you that those symptoms are going to take you, that this marriage is going to end, the lie that the banks are going to take all your money, all of the fear that comes on a daily basis to the Christian, if the devil tells you your money's going to be stolen, if the devil tells you your family is going to break up, if the devil tells you you're going to lose your mind, get up and dance because he's a liar. And you can look at him and devil, you just gave me the proof that what you said is never going to happen because you said it. Somebody give God the glory. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. I am going to go back to the university campuses and preach. God has already warned me I'm going back. I'm going back. And I'm going to look at those young minds and I'm going to tell you, it's Friday night. You don't have a date. Your pizza was rotten. The drug didn't kick in. The grades are falling. Your life is falling apart. And the one thing that your go-to thing is you got to have fun because all your friends are having fun. You're the last one left in the dorm. You are the sad sack that was abandoned. You're the wallflower. You are the wilting wallflower, son. That's who you are. The girl left you for somebody else. The drug didn't work. You got ripped off. He mixed so much of it with baking powder, there was no steam in it. And so here you are alone in your dorm with nothing. And you know what you need? I need fun. I need fun. Fun is based on circumstances. The girl said yes. The drug kicked in. The money showed up. The party was what you expected. That's when fun comes. But let me tell you about Christian joy. Christian joy is this. Has nothing to do with anything going on around me. Has everything to do with who's living inside of me. It has... It has... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah right here? Peter said you haven't seen him. You might not even feel him. But something inside of you tells you, I'm born again, blood by God. I'm protected by angels. I've got a holy book that's inspired of God. I'm go my, their world's falling apart. Mine's coming together. Someday he's coming for me. And then I'm going to go to him to live forever with him in heaven. I've got an inheritance. I've got a family of love. The money doesn't matter. The, all of that doesn't matter. What matters is I know, I know who is living inside of me. Shout, 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 shout. 